Hello, welcome. Hi everyone. Welcome to the creation space. Lovely to see you here. My name's Grace. And I'm Sarah. And today we will be showing you how to make um, bowls with air dry clay and stencils or alternatively leaves or found objects. Um, so the makers, the creation space is a maker space. Um, we have a lot of equipment in here. We have 3D printers that you can see behind us. We have a laser cutter. We have vinyl cutters, um, 3D scanner as well, and a soldering iron. Um, so we have lots of amazing tools that we hope to welcome you back next year um, so that you can actually participate in person and play with our on new equipment. Um, but until then, we're offering some online workshops. So today, I guess we'll start with you, Sarah. You can demonstrate um, yep. a pinch pot technique. Yes, so this um, workshop was originally designed to be in the creation space, but uh, we've had to uh, adapt it to Zoom. So what we did online was give you a recipe for some air dry clay. I don't know if anyone has had a go at making some air dry clay themselves. Um, you can just put your hand up if you have, or if you bought your own clay, uh, that's okay too. You can just um, have a look today and, and see uh, how to do it. And then you'll be able to have some ideas about how to go about doing it at home. But if we were going to make some air dry clay ourselves, um, the recipe that we had uh, has just some basic kitchen ingredients for us. So it was one cup of corn flour, one cup of uh, some you know, PVA type glue, a tablespoon of white vinegar or any kind of vinegar really, and a tablespoon of oil. And what you do is you mix them all up and you put them in the microwave and it heats, heats it all up a little bit and you take it out and you roll it. So I'll just, I'll grab some I've done. I did this yesterday in uh, the microwave and when it comes out, it actually uh, looks a little bit, I might just go over to this screen here actually and show you. It looks a little bit like this. Uh, and then what you can do is use that to create some objects like this one. This is a little ring holder I've made. Um, and I've just um, put a little bit of uh, poster paint in it while I was mixing it and I got that lovely marbled effect. Uh, so it's quite hard. I'll just kind of knock it like that. It takes about two or three days to really harden and dry. And that one there, I just put a little bit of purple paint in while it, I was mixing it up and I made some lovely little gift tags and I just put some stamps in them. So lovely little gift tags there. So what we'll start with today is um, a couple of techniques we want to show you that are really great hand building basic techniques. Uh, the first one is called uh, pinching and with that we'll make a pinch pot. So we've got our clay and the first thing we wanna do is we want to roll it into a ball so it's about the size of a small, uh, say a mandarin or uh, an, an orange, no bigger than a, an orange really, because it gets a bit hard to work with. So really um, you, wanna, you want to push it together so that you make sure that it's nicely compressed. I'll take my ring off because it's making a bit of a mark there. So once you've got your ball, then what we do when everyone's ready is you take your thumb and you put your thumb into the centre of the ball. Create a little, a little hole like that. Now with a pinch pot, the only thing we're interested in is the inside shape. We don't want to worry too much about the outside shape. I can see there that some of us are still getting our clay ready. That's okay. We can all just go at whatever pace. And by the way, if anyone has any questions, you can just raise your hand and speak, turn your mic on, or you can chat in the chat box. No, feel free to ask us questions at any time. So uh, yeah, this, 
air dry clay is a great way to start if you've got an interest in pottery or clay because it's it's cheap you don't need to fire it and then you can decorate it which is um, great too uh, we'll be showing some ways to decorate so once you've got your 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 round ball and you've put your your hole in it then what you want to do is kind of um, support it in your hand and rotate it and gently kind of push push your fingers up so your thumb is in inside the hole and then you're gently pushing and pinching the outside up if you pinch and pull out you're going to make a larger hole so think about the inside hole always this is going to be the shape of your vessel your bowl or your cup I think I'm going to make mine quite large so I'm going to really kind of pull it out as I go around the good thing about clay is if you don't like what you've made you just smash it into a ball and start <laughs> again but this is a great technique. The good thing about a uh, pinch pot is that um, it has no joins, so it's going to dry really well. It's not going to crack um, because it's just one, literally one piece. I can see my bowl is quite getting quite large now. Sorry, can I just um, ask a question? Mm -hmm. How yeah. much? I just have some leftover air drying clay at home, so I wasn't prepared to make more than one piece. Yeah. How much um, would we need for the plate? Um, probably it'll be about the size of a little saucer. Okay. Or you can we'll, make it as large as We're going to use a leaf, so. Size will be a little bit bigger. Yeah. It really could be even smaller. It could just you you might decide to make a little ring, um, a ring bowl or a ring holder or something like that. Okay then. So do you reckon about okay, so I'll just decide to make the plate then. Yeah, if you just want to make the plate, that's fine too. So okay. we're just showing you a few techniques here today. So the the first main techniques you learn when you do any kind of pottery class. I don't know if so, some of you all may already be potters. Um, the first techniques you learn anyway are pinch, pinching and slab work and then coil work. We're not going to show you coil work today, but we're going to show you pinching and um, slab work. So there's my little bowl. And what I do to give it a flat base is I just kind of the drop it a little bit on on my work surface. <clears throat> now, because we don't have, we're not inside the creation space and we can't use um, stencils from 3D printing, we're just using found objects today. So I've got a little rock that I picked up when I was down at the beach. And I'm just going to decorate the outside just by imprinting. on the side, but you could use anything. You could use the back of a spoon. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to go around it. You could you do use a toothbrush. You could use a <laughs> toothbrush. You could even um, use a shell. Like I've got a little, oh, sorry, Grace. I've got some little shells here. And gently supporting it on the inside while I press in. I'm going to get some lovely little shapes like that. We're really um, only limited by our oh, ideas. Yes, mm -hmm. well, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing, uh, if you you might have some just um, stamps lying around the house, you can even use those. I've got some letters, so I'll I'll finish my pinch pot off with that. But it's a lovely um, activity to do on a rainy day, isn't it? Getting some good um, 
good decoration with that shell. I'm really happy with that. So, so then, those of you who are creating at home, how, how are you going? How are, how are your pots coming along? <laughs> You can just show them if you like. Wow, that one looks great. Oh, very nice. Very good. <laughs> yeah. I like the shell technique. There we go. So just really, really easy. Obviously, uh, I've got a little bit of work to do on the inside, smoothing it, but just... Um, you can buy tools, but you, you, your fingers are great tools. Uh, a back of a little um, teaspoon is a great smoothing tool. And an old sponge is great too, dipping, dipped mm -hmm. in some water. And I'll just finish this one off with a little, I don't know, a little word on the inside of my pot. So then we'll just leave them, the air dry clay, yeah, it takes, depending on what the weather's like, it takes about, they say 24 hours for it to dry. Probably 48 is a good, good amount of time as well before you start decorating it. Okay. So there's my first, um, there's our first little pot. We'll give you a few minutes. Um, and we'll get set up for the next technique that we wanted to show you, which is uh, slab building. Lovely, I can see that we've got some beautiful pots being created there. That's really good. Well done. So the next technique that we wanted to show you is the, the slab building. You can create great little sculptures and mini tiles using the slab building method. And the key is to make sure you get the thickness of your slab right. Because if it's too thick, it will take a long time to dry. But if it's too thin, it might be that your work takes a little bit of a battering and it will um, crack. So, so if you've got a ball of clay, then I would just suggest flattening it first. So making a little kind of circle, pressing it down. And then you can just take a rolling pin if you have one at home um, or any kind of round surface like that. Um, or you can use your fingers, but it saves a lot of time if you have a rolling pin. And you just want to roll it out quite large. Well, it, depend, it depends on how much clay you have, of course, um, and what size dish you'd like to make. So you can make, as Sarah was showing you before, something very small if you like. I've made this one um, into an interesting kind of floral sh flower shape or a like slightly larger bowl or a different kind of different size, different shape, whatever you like. But today I'm going to do quite a large plate because I'd like to show you um, our stencils that we actually made in the 3D printer that we have here at the Makerspace. Using a rolling pin is great because you'll get a nice even surface of, a, of your slab and you'll also be able to compress the clay as you go which will mean that it will um, it will just be stronger as it dries. You can see any little air bubbles if they appear you can just get a little um, toothpick and just um, get rid of those air bubbles and as you go Sometimes turning the slab over is good too, to roll both sides. So that's something that can help compress the clay as well. So 
kind of like pastry, really. <laughs> yeah, we've got. Is that a question from Winnie? Yeah, I've got a question. I'm finding that my clay is kind of thick on one side and then thin on the other. Is there a way that I can try and get it more even? Um, if you had, if you had two little rulers, perhaps, or um, you could you could roll the rolling pin out on top of them and that way the clay would spread to the width of the space in between the little rulers that's yeah. something that might help um, it's not it's yeah it's not easy though sometimes you do it does naturally um thin out on the edges mm. um, okay cool but, yeah but just eyeballing it is it is you know that's all all we need to do that's kind of the beauty of uh handmade <laughs> pottery isn't it it's a little bit wonky <laughs> imperfect <laughs> but yeah it can can be a little bit difficult to get the the uh, slab even so has anyone come up with any other ideas about making their slab even <laughs> <laughs> no. Can I just ask, I've just used the clay direct from the packet mm -hmm. without kneading it or anything. Is that fine? Yeah, with the air dry clay, it doesn't really need a lot of kneading. I suppose if you've worked it into something else and now you want to, you know, you didn't like what you were making and you wanted to, you know, remake it into something else, um, sloughing it back into you know doing a bit of wedging uh kneading is what they call it might be good okay but then certainly if you're putting it into a rolling it into a slab the act of rolling it and pressing down on it is actually going to compress the clay quite well so it should be okay great so our slab's looking pretty good grace yes. well done <laughs> all right um so what we mm -hmm. want to do is first we want to compress the clay a little bit. That's it. So I'm just using a little wooden tool here, but you could just use your hands um, or just a flat surface if you have whatever you can find, just to smooth it out. Yeah, that looks good. And that can kind of smooth out those edges. without any bumps. And if that happens, fingers, mm -hmm. fingers are helpful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can spend a bit of time on that if you wish. And I'm just going to show you as well, um, if you have a leaf or um, or any kind of found objects as Sarah was using, demonstrating with the shell, things like that, you can um, use these to create the patterns. I will be using this leaf um, later so because I'm going to make a leaf shaped dish. So if you'd like to save your clay for that one, that's an option. Um, but first of all, I'm going to demonstrate using our stencils that we made in the 3D printer. So these we made in our MakerBot replicator 3D printer. Um, as I said, we'll be able to invite you back into the maker space next year. Hopefully we can do a similar workshop and we can create our own style, create our own stencils, which then you can take home and use for future creations. So we have this one here and a smaller version and also if you can see that, I'm not sure if you can see, but this was, what was it, Sarah, was a piece of fabric in the original? Yeah, so that's uh, 3D printed from a basket weave uh, pattern. You can see the basket weave texture in there. That looks beautiful. And, and you've actually used that, mm -hmm. Grace, in one of your So I used ones. this with my air dry clay creation. So I made a little bowl and just pressed the stencil into the pattern into the uh, clay to make this pattern. And then I've kind of just used a pencil actually to 
make this edge to make it look like kind of fabric -y. Mm. And I did the same with this little one here. So I don't know if you can see that it's got that texture to it, which is really, really effective. Mm. So we're going to show you the 3D printed stencils. Obviously you won't have those, but you could use um, an old piece of lace if you've got it, or um, you really anything to imprint uh, across this whole piece of slab that you've created. Um, and it, you'll have the same effect. So I think I'm going to use the large stencil today. So if you have a stencil or as I said, a leaf or any or, or a piece of lace, like Sarah said, anything like that, just decide how you would like it to look. This one is quite big, so it's just gonna go straight in the middle. Um, but say I was working with the patterned stencil, then I might just haphazardly put it all over the place <laughs> and just have a more interesting, fun design. But I'll show you this one today. So this is the stencil, and I'm just going to go over that again with the rolling pin, just very gently so that it really secures that imprint. Now I can see that the clay is coming up through the stencil. You would find the same if you were using lace or material. You can kind of just get a sense when it's ready. And then delicately, oops, we want to remove <laughs> the stencil. This is the tricky part. <laughs> there we go. And again, the good thing about clay is we can smooth over the edges just with our fingers to fix it up. That's looking pretty good. Now, with my stencil, it has these edges here from the, the square and I don't want that. So I'm just going to rub that out with my fingers or maybe use my little tool. The fingers are great. I love, you get a lot of um, control when you use your fingers, the pads of your fingers. Yeah. It's a and it, again, it adds to that hand crafted, beautiful kind of feel of the work, doesn't it? The other thing you could do with something like this is you could, you, you wouldn't even make, you know, you don't have to make it into a bowl. You could just let it um, dry flat. You could cut around it. And then you could, deck when you decorate it, you could make a little um, coaster, mm. you like this one. Let's see. Oh, yes, like this. <laughs> That's one we made before. And, and it really feels like a tile. You could even hang it on the wall, mm -hmm. wouldn't you? You can use the same technique to make gift tags, ornaments, anything like that. Wind chimes. Has anyone got any specific ideas in mind that they're trying to uh, bring into creation? with their air dry clay. You've been dreaming about making something. <laughs> yeah, I um, actually saw um, grapevine leaves and I thought, mm. oh gee, that'd make a nice plate. And then um, this workshop came up. So oh. um, I've got a grapevine leaf. Wow. Oh, amazing. Oh, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> Have you got your grapevine leaf there ready to go? Yeah, I just pressed it overnight. Yep. So that it's nice and flat. Beautiful. Oh, yes, that's great. Well, with the next one, I'm pressing a leaf. Okay. So you'll be able to see so a similar technique. Thing. It's very similar to this one, actually, <laughs> the stencil. All right. That's looking great, yeah. Grace. Beautiful. So I'm just going to blurt out those edges and just focusing on the pattern in the middle. And then I'm going to take a bowl here.
and you want a bowl that's slightly smaller than your clay so that you can place it inside. You can just use the back of your hand to shape that into the bowl so that you want your clay touching the bottom of the bowl like that. And you can just kind of play around until it feels about centered. And then we're just going to trim the edges. So I'll just adjust that a little bit more. You can do the same with the leaf or, um, or any other kind of, any other design, any other kind of stencil rather. I'm just going to. Yeah, so the bowl is acting as a mold and will support the clay until it dries. Um, and so that's one of the beauty of, you know, wonderful things about slab building is that if you have a favourite dish or something that you really love, you can then use the air dry clay to create uh, another one, but personalise it. <laughs> that looks great. You've done really well. <laughs> so I'm just folding my clay over the edges, you can see, and I'm just going to use this little tool um, to cut around, but you could just use a butter knife or again, just your fingers, so that might take a little bit longer. Just to cut off the edges and make it even. It's kind of like making a pie. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely feels like that. I love I love pottery because it's very slow <laughs> and meditative and calming hobby. Makes you feel just really relaxed. Thing for a rainy day. Yeah, perfect for a rainy day. That looks beautiful. How's everyone else going with their their plates so far? Have you have you um, got any questions? Does anyone have any questions at this stage? No, that's okay. When you cut off the edges, you want to save that. So I could make something else out of this. It's quite a lot of extra clay. So just put it back into a little bowl and make sure that you cover it up um, with some plastic glad wrap or um, an airproof container, just so that you can use it again. I'm going to need to smooth these edges as well. And if you have, again, just like a kitchen sponge at home, you can use that to smooth the edges. If you find that you've scratched it with your nail or anything else, and you just want to make it look a little bit more polished, you can kind of go around the edges and do that before we set it aside to dry. So with air dry clay, you want to give it about 24 to 48 hours. Um, to dry and once it's dry you can actually add some paint which we're going to demonstrate later as well we just need to I'm actually really impressed with how well that's worked out. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> no, it was, it was always going to be a success, but it's exceeded my expectations. Was it? <laughs> it's really worth taking the time at this stage to, to smooth the edges because once it's dry, um, you really lost that opportunity. Um, so getting it smooth 
right to the point where you're, you'll be happy just to lift it out of your mold. Mm -hmm. um, it's really worth doing that. Especially on the outside where you, you cut away the excess clay, getting those edges nice and smooth. <clears throat> because once it's dry, your bowl is basically finished. All you'll, all you'll be doing then is decorating it with some paint if you want to, and then putting um, the water-based sealer on it. Because remember that air dry clay, even when it's dry, it's not waterproof. So we wouldn't be uh, making anything today with air dry clay that we would be putting water in. Um, if we want to do that, we would need to, we need to use, you know, normal clay and uh, fire it in a kiln. But there's lots of applications for air dry clay where you don't need any, uh, you don't need it to be waterproof, but the, the spray will make it water resistant. Has anyone done pottery themselves at school or just as uh, dabbled in it as a hobby so far? Yep. One person put their hand up. Oh, was... oh right, lovely, lovely. And, and do you do it often? I, um used to do some pottery classes when I was living in Japan Ooh, yeah. which was like I don't know um must be nine years ago now so I haven't done anything since did you learn any particular techniques in uh, Japan? I think my, most of it was uh wheel throwing oh wonderful um so yeah but it takes a lot of dedication <laughs> Yes, uh, centering the clay on the wheel yeah. is it takes a lot of um, skill, doesn't it? it? Does yes. <laughs> I've gone through lots of uh, tries to try and master that myself, but I, I haven't yet really got there. So I prefer hand building. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, the good thing about hand building is we can very easily. Um, as Sarah was saying earlier, just roll it up into a bowl and start again if it hasn't worked out the way that you planned. Mm -hmm. um. Yeah, there are lots of uh, classes that you can do, but um, you can learn a lot online as well, can't you? There's so, so many videos that you can watch. Oh, this one. <laughs> like this one, yes. And books, and books from the library that you can get. Today, we're actually using a lot of the information that we found. I'll just show just like yeah. Grace, just really good from this book, Make It With Air Dry Clay uh, by Faye de Winter. So, this is a book you can borrow at the Mosman Library. And we've got actually quite a lot of books on uh, ceramics. Hand building techniques. Um, yes. And yeah, some of the ideas that we're actually showing you today were actually from this book. So, we should acknowledge that. <laughs> Thank you, Faye. Thanks, Faye. I might stop fiddling with this one for now. I would just set that aside. I'll set that aside for 24 hours to dry. And let's see. So now I'm going to do a very similar technique, but using the leaf. So I've found this large leaf, and I'm actually going to make a dish shaped like the leaf. So I'm starting out the same way um, by rolling, kneading the clay, rolling it out, flattening it, pressing in a stencil design or rather the leaf as my stencil. And then, and then I'm actually just gonna cut around the leaf shape and that will be the dish. So you can do the same or you could actually just leave the leaf in as an imprint, just as a pattern, and you could have it as a round shape. So whatever you like. This one is not clay that I've made. This is a bought clay, a dry clay. <laughs> So 
So to make it large enough to uh, be the size of this leaf, I'm going to need it obviously to be a bit bigger than the leaf. So I'll need probably a fair amount of clay. Yeah. You could even use cookie cutters. If you had some old cookie cutters, you no longer used to make biscuits out of, you know, love hearts. You could make, um, you could use those with your air dry clay, put a little hole in them, and then um, they could be an ornament or a tag. We love found, found objects that are beautiful because they're natural. Who doesn't want a leaf bowl in their life? <laughs> and because we're using air dry clay, just remember that um, it can't get wet. So you will just use these dishes as for a display. So I will probably use my little leaf dish just maybe for jewelry or objects that are not damp. <laughs> Chocolates. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Wrapped up, COVID safe. Yes. So, Looking good. so after a bit of kneading, just want to flatten it as much as possible and then Again, we will use the rolling pin. We've got a piece of canvas that we are rolling our air dry clay on. And canvas is a great thing to use under your clay because it absorbs some of the moisture, but the clay won't stick to it. But if you don't have a piece of canvas or um, anything like that. Um, when I first started out, I would just use um, some, some lab wrap really, uh, if my bench was getting a bit sticky and uh, I just roll my clay between the lab wrap. That, that seemed to work. If you're finding that your clay is too wet and it's getting a bit sticky and you can't peel it off the bench. Is anyone having any difficulties with the air dry clay sticking to the bench? or you're finding it, it's all working well, that's good. I was just gonna ask as well, if the, the the bowl that we did, will it stick to the mold, like, or will it just pop out when it's dry? It should just pop out when it's dry, okay. uh, because it's gonna separate from the bowl, but uh, a practice that some people do is to put a piece of glad wrap under, or, you know, plastic, mm. recycled, you know, an old bag or something like that um, under the clay before you put it into the bowl mould. But I've done both. And if you wait long enough, the clay will dry and it will just, um, you might need to release the edges a little bit with a pin tool or like a little knife, just to kind of separate the edges. But if you do wait long enough, it will just pop out of the bowl. Okay, great. <laughs> But when I've been impatient and tried to pull it out too quickly, <laughs> then it's cracked. Yeah. And that's the thing about uh, pottery is you've got to get used to things failing, uh, breaking, not working, cracking, cracking when they dry, <laughs> that kind of thing. But um, the better the technique um, when we're making it when it's wet, um, the, the better result we'll have. The other thing you might want to think about doing um, is when you're when you've got your bowl drying is just putting a little bit of plastic around the edges of the bowl because the edges do tend to dry faster than the middle and if you if the clay is drying at different rates that's why sometimes it will crack it's not so much a problem with air dry clay um, but if you're a bit worried about that. Uh, just put a little, just loosely, uh, a piece of cling film over the top. 
Right, that looks great. So this is about the size that I want. And I'm just going to press the leaf. So I'm going to press it um, face up because I want the imprint of the leaf there. So let's see what we can do. So I'm just going to place that properly in the center, smooth it down, and then I'll go over it again with the rolling pin. How good does that look? <laughs> it's a great it looks great. Nature makes the best stencils. Absolutely. And they're free. And by putting the leaf with the veins facing down directly on the clay, you're going to get a better imprint. Oh, you, definition. Yeah. So you want to be firm but gentle. Don't want to tear the leaf, but we do want to press hard enough to make a good imprint. Now, if you just wanted to make a round dish, then you could remove the leaf at this point um, and just have that pattern on there. And then you could use a bowl like this and press it over to create that round shape if you want to. Um, but I'm going to cut around the leaf and have a leaf shaped dish. So I'm going to leave the leaf on there and cut around it for now. It's looking pretty good. Right. I am just going to use this tool. What did you say this was called? Uh, I, I call it a pin tool, but pin it's tool. kind of like a toothpick, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you could use a toothpick or even a pencil. A pencil would work just fine. I'm just going to carve around. Wait. Or you could use a knife. Yes. You could use yeah. a knife if you wanted to. Yeah. I think that you get really good um, control when you use a little tool that has that, that really just this pointy little edge, pointy edge. Though. You could use a pencil, that would be fine. Basically, you want to draw an outline of the leaf, isn't it? That's what you're aiming for. Exactly. You're doing a good job, Trent. Right? <laughs> And then just remember to save your clay. So I like to pull it up in little pieces like that. Roll it back up and save it for another creation. The second leaf bowl. Mm. A set of two. Don't worry if it's not perfect at this stage because you can neaten it up after you've removed the leaf, but you do want to get it pretty close to the edge if you want it to maintain that shape. Is anyone following along and doing the a leaf shape? Or are you just using a leaf as a stencil? Or have you got your own stencils that you're using? Cookie cutters. Oh, yes, is that, that looks like oh. a block of wood. Oh, cool. Wow, that looks great. Oh, that's really pretty. Did you make that? <laughs> no, so I just put it in a bit of timber. Oh, oh bit of timber. Beautiful. Oh, oh, you're making gorgeous tiles. So pretty. Well done, that looks fabulous.
I've now realised that a grapevine leaf is actually very detailed. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. I'm cutting around it, but it's very, um, yeah. I can't well, if your word. If your clay is thick enough, which it probably is, um, I'd say it'll, it will retain a certain amount of detail, but you can, if you like, just, you know, go a bit, trace more kind of loosely around the leaf shape if you wanted to. You could um, skip a couple of the details. Oh, uh, yep. If you want to. How are we going for time? Yeah, uh, we're uh, 45 minutes in. So I think we'll, we'll have time to just briefly show the sponge. Painting technique. technique. Yes, yeah. before we finish. Can I just ask what you're going to do around the stem? Because oh, I'm just going to take the stem off. So I'm, I mean. Um, so you're just going to do the leaf? I'm just going to have to leave, but you right. could use them if you want to, but I think it might be a bit too fragile. Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Thanks. I'll just talk a little bit about sealing your clay while Grace is finishing that. So sealing your air dry clay um, is essential if you want the piece to last for, for a while. And there are a variety of sealing options available. And the choice basically depends on the look that you want and what your piece is going to be used for. So you've got the option to do a brush on or spray on gloss. So that would be an acrylic based gloss and it's used um, when your piece is dry and it adds a brilliant shine. So all um, a lot of um, air dry clay is when you see it, it is being finished with uh, the brush or spray on glosses. The other thing you could do is you could just use a waterproof sealer and that protects it from water and heat damage. And the information according to the book that we're using today says that when you're looking for a waterproof sealer, you want to make sure that the label says that it's water-based as that's what makes it waterproof. And um, you want to make sure that your piece is completely dry before you seal it and you apply the sealer in a thin layer and then, and then let the piece dry before adding a second coat. Otherwise, you might get air bubbles or the piece may become a little bit cloudy because of the moisture that's still trying to escape from the clay. If you would apply too many coats, your piece may start to peel over time. So the recommendation is just to apply one thin layer at a time. Um, and the other thing you could do is you could just use some uh, PVA glue in a thin layer, kind of like um, a decoupage. Um, result there. So there's a few options for sealing your air dry clay when it's finished. Great. That looks wonderful. I think I'm going to attempt yes. to very carefully peel the leaf off from this clay. If you find that it's quite stuck, you can use a knife or a tool just to separate the two. Of course, you want to be careful so you don't want to lose that pattern. Wow, you can see the definition. 
Yeah. And that will come up if I add some paint to it later as well. I'm just going to smooth the edges a little bit. And then I'm just going to place it over top of a bowl to let it dry. So at this stage, using a damp sponge is really helpful for retaining the uh, movability, I guess, of the clay, because of course, with air dry clay, it dries, can dry pretty quickly. So sometimes using a bit of water can help initially with um, creating the shape that you want. But once you set it aside to dry, ideally in full sun for 24 to 48 hours. And don't let it get wet after that. I'm smoothing the edges, but don't want to go overboard because I don't want to lose that definition from the leaf. So just take your time with the smoothing. Because as Sarah said, once it dries, we can't fix any of the mistakes later. Well, that's what we call him. <laughs> so we wanted it like that. That's right. <laughs> So as you say, if you want something to look perfect, just buy it in a store. Buy a machine made plate. We don't That's want right. that. I put some plastic on this one because I okay. think that it will assist with uh, removal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you, if you do so, have some plastic, I think that uh, we question before was a good one. Um, and yes, maybe putting a big piece of plastic in between the clay and the mould that you're using will, is, will help you when it comes time to take it off. So we've just got a piece of old glad wrap that we've got. We're placing it on top of the bowl and that will be, uh, the, the clay will then sit on that and then we'll be able to peel, peel it off when the clay is dry. If I had a slightly smaller dish, I might have turned it this way to rest the, um, the clay in. But just flipping it over like that will give it the shape that I would want. It will give it a bit more of a curve. But it's up to you if you wanted a completely flat leaf, then just let it dry on a plate, flat surface. <laughs> it's a little bit it's stuck, bit sticky, yeah. but just want to be careful so I don't lose the shape at all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you want to. Thank you, Sarah. Now, Sarah's got the right technique. Feeling well, good. not really. You've just got to <laughs> you just got to go for it, don't you? And we're going to do it this way. Um, yes. It? Yeah. I'll give it back to you. Yeah. However you want to do yes. it. Yes. So I would like this to be facing upward, of course. So we want the design to be um, um, clear. So I'm going to flip it over. Yep. So you won't see the design anymore. But I'll just place it like that to let it dry. You just have to trust me that it will look really good when it's dry. And it's good now that I can see the back and I can see that there's a couple of little flaws and I can, I still have time before it dries to just very carefully smooth it so that the back of the dish looks nice as well. We should actually put the finished product on display in the library. So, a good idea. you know, you can come, come in and, and see, see what, the, what the final <laughs> results look like. <laughs> or maybe we could post it. Couldn't we? Yeah, we'll post it. it. And 
you're all welcome to post comments of your creations as well. We'd love to see what, you've, what your finished products look like. Okay, I'm not going to fuss too much because it's the back. I'm just going to set that aside to dry as well. Fantastic. And now we can quickly, I think if we have time, we can run you through a very simple uh, painting technique as well. Okay, so just very, very quickly, what we're going to do is in the book that we've been using, they talk about uh, painting techniques. And one of the most basic is just to sponge it on and then to wipe it away so you'll see a bit of that definition. Um, so this is one that we made uh, beforehand. So it's just a little mould uh, with the stencil that we've used. And we're just going to, this is just a little bit of acrylic poster paint. And that's really all I'm going to do with this is just put a little bit of paint and you can see it's picking up those lovely stencil marks and there we go. And I'll let that dry uh, and then I will use my, I think I'm just gonna use PVA um, Mod Podge kind of sealant on this. And then, uh, I don't know, I think that's gonna go on the desk inside the library and we'll put our paper clips in it. So when you come into the library, you can see that, uh, you can see what we've made. So that's just a very basic technique. Uh, and, and that's just really, um, yeah, acrylic poster paint uh, with a sponge technique. There are other techniques in, in, in the book that we're using, but uh, there you go. Okay. Well done, everyone. Oh, we hope you had a lovely time. Um, and also uh, keep an eye out for the, the, this workshop to be done again next year. We'll do it in again the creation space in the creation and space. We can space. show you how to make your own stencils. So you can also come prepared with your own design or you can come in and use one of our templates. Okay. Thanks for coming along and we hope everyone has a great day. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.